Supplier Guidelines Part 3 We've had cable reels weighing 16,000 pounds show up at our warehouse unannounced. Cargo of this size obviously needs better shipping coordination with the receiving facility to have on hand the crew to handle this. Most cargo is signed for clean, meaning there is no visible damage or shortages noted. It is not possible to discover concealed damage or shortages upon a cursory inspection. We generally then take a picture of the cargo, if damage may be involved, and send it to the foreign principal to decide if it should be returned to the manufacturer or proceed with the international shipment. Some cargo may be refused if the warehouse determines it is too difficult to determine the shipping unit. For instance, bandit items become dislodged as loose. Some cargo is sold by the foreign principal to their customer within the United States upon receipt at our warehouse. In that case, the title control and risk technically transfers to the foreign principal's buyer or their U.S. logistics representative when it is picked up from our facility. What has been shipped to us needs to match the line items of the purchase order. For instance, a PO may call for 10 line items, but only the items 3, 6, and 8 are shipped on, in one skid. To, accurate receive, to accurately receive the cargo and make corresponding accurate export declarations from the U.S. and customs entry overseas, the exact line items corresponding to the shipment received need to be updated in our database. For larger items that may require special unloading with an overhead crane, extended forklifts, or special handling, instructions should ideally be provided before the cargo is received, and a copy of these instructions should clearly be available to the receiving warehouse. Otherwise, the consequences of improper unloading could result in a claim situation. Creating proper documentation is based on the documentation provided by the supplier. The consolidated packing list that is used to clear customs at the destination is totally based on the accuracy of the packing list provided by the U.S. supplier. To view examples of the export documents our PO Wizard creates, check the PO Wizard link from our website. The old saying, garbage in, garbage out, applies to the consolidated shipment documentation H.C. Bennett creates. If the supplier provides inaccurate, erroneous, or incomplete information that will, carry for, that will carry forward to the documentation we produce. Looking for more export documentation detail, H.C.B. offers a webinar for that too. This does explain the key typical documents used for any export transaction. Understanding the logic behind each field on the form is explained. Numerous vendors can be associated with a typical international transaction. As the FPPI agent, we need to coordinate shipping and expense activities such as inland transportation, warehouse handling, container stuffing, marine terminal fees, and government agency reporting. The PO Wizard makes it possible to systematically input PO information, receive cargo, tag cargo for consolidation, manage associated expenses, create needed international forms, make export declarations, and provide the guidance the warehouse needs to load the goods. This is a complete export documentation and PO management software that HCB will sell, set up, and train to any interested exporter. It is far less expensive than commercially available export software and hand requires no monthly maintenance fee. Cargo cannot be shipped from the U.S. until ACE, formerly AES, provides an authorization to do so. As the U.S. manufacturer or seller of the goods, your company is normally responsible for the proper export document declaration. H.C. Bennett Company doesn't need to obtain a power of attorney authorization to show you as the U.S. PPI, but we do require your EIN, your federal ID number. Ideally, your packing list that accompanies the shipment 
should contain the Schedule B classification and actual country of origin of each line item. If it is impractical to show this information, we, we offer sending you a list of part numbers shipped through us in the past and ask that you update them with the proper Schedule B number. Not showing any origin assumes a default country of the U.S. For most Schedule B's classifications, the, the item typically needs to be reported at its net, as its net weight or number of units. Being able to derive the net weight and item count of each line item shipped should additionally be made available on your packing list. If the unit value shown on your commercial invoice is different from that shown on the foreign principal's purchase order, the item should be flagged to alert us to update in our system. Some suppliers require that H.C. Bennett provide them with a hard copy of the export declaration that is furnished to ACE. The data is uploaded electronically to ACE and no hard copy is now required otherwise. There is no prohibition for the U.S. PPI to make their own EEI declarations to Census. HCB will work with you if your policy so dictates. We need to obtain the ITN number that Census issues. This is the authorization number needed by the carrier before the cargo can leave the United States. Interested in learning more about Schedule B and HTS classification principles? HCB has a free three-part online video to view. After learning from the three videos, take the HTS online quiz. Here's an example of one of the video slides. As freight forwarders, understanding how to classify products for EEI declarations is our forte. However, ultimately, Census looks to the U.S. PPI to accurately convey the proper classification of each part that is reported. The U.S. exporter also has the responsibility to have an understanding of the U.S. export regulations. A presentation providing an overview of the U.S. export regulations is available to any U.S. PPI we deal with. Let us know if you want to participate in a free online meeting that stages this presentation. Here's part of the discussion regarding export control classification numbers. Some purchase orders all relate to a project. The purchase order itself could include hundreds of line items. Many times the PO price may be a lump sum of a whole unit, when, but when shipped, parts of that unit come to us in different, at different times. If we don't accumulate everything as one completed end item, the individual parts are shipped separately to the destination for assembly. Therefore, we need to know the unit value of each part shipped when the whole PO isn't shipped together and is ordered at as a lump sum. Some suppliers designate internal part or line item numbers that may or may not completely correlate to the PO's line item. When the item is received, it needs to be properly accounted for against the PO line item. Many projects are won from government bids and significant late delivery penalties can result, periodically providing us with spreadsheets showing the shipping status of each open line item assists with the receipt of our, at our warehouse and international shipment planning. Some supplier shipments do not have to be consolidated or moved through H.C. Bennett Company. The shipping of these direct shipments from your facility can be handled by H.C.B. by our coordination directly with the international carrier. We can have commercial invoice and certificate of origins attested when required. In addition to the issues of ambiguous shipping marks, and improper documents. Other issues could occur. The more significant ones are addressed in the next covered slides. The difference between what is shown on the sales packing list and what is actually shipped can result in a discrepancy that could blossom into a dispute or hard feelings between you and your customer. 
Periodically, HCB receives dis discrepancy reports from the foreign principals we represented, noting that what was inventoried as received at their end versus what the packing list states. Many foreign buyers who purchase on a route transaction basis automatically insure all U.S. supplier purchases using their insurance company in their country. This is an all-risk warehouse-to-warehouse -warehouse coverage. Because the cargo is insured doesn't absolve you or any of the parties along the supply chain from prudent care and responsibility. If cargo is damaged or lost, a survey may be required. We recall one container that fell over while in the process or while in the possession of the steamship line just prior to the vessel loading. A surveyor representing the foreign buyer's insurance company and another surveyor representing the steamship line were involved in a joint survey. When cargo is received at an A.C. Bennett company receiving facility, any shortages, damages, or any indication of possible concealed damage are noted on the inland trucker's bill of lading. The delivering truck driver also is asked to co-sign the inland bill of lading, acknowledging the exception to a clean bill of lading. Unacceptable packaging is often the primary reason for damaged or missing goods. The insurance company will generally subrogate the cost of the claim to whoever is responsible for improper packaging. Some manufacturers have procedures in, whole, in place to hold a damaged unit and subsequently return it when a replacement has been received. In some cases, the cargo is in such a complete state of disarray that the shipment needs to be refused. After noting exceptions on the bill of lading, a preliminary claim may be presented by H.C. Bennett to the delivering carrier. The delivering carrier usually then, then provides information as to the condition, condition of the goods when they sign for the goods. The U.S. exporter should have an understanding of the claim procedures and marine insurance. A presentation providing an overview is also available to any USPPI we deal with. Here's a part of the discussion regarding the three main perils of coverage. The reasons material must be returned include shipping orders that were canceled, shipping to the wrong consignee location, or shipping goods that don't meet specification. Damaged goods are often returned too, but are dealt with as claims issues when the value dictates. Consider the bullet points of this slide. Something as basic as an operating manual included with the goods can be very important. Check which items require test certificates. It generally is easiest that the test report accompanies the related cargo. Clarify where the warranty documents can be found. Are they accompanied, do they accompany the cargo or sent via separate correspondence? For inspection and accountability purposes, nameplates such as the, are much more than cosmetic additions to the material. Foreign customs may be looking for information that is best conveyed through a professional nameplate, not a homemade pressure sensitive label. For hazmat shipments, we produce the IMO which is based on the guidance from the supplier shipping department. It is advised that H.C. Bennett be consulted and provided a copy of the MSDS prior to shipping the goods to our receiving facility. Many shipments are closely monitored by line item. The estimated ship date carries over to the order status report provided to the foreign buyer. Plans are made by H.C. Bennett and the foreign buyer based on the accuracy of the estimated shipping dates. And so ends part three, the last part of the supplier guideline presentation. To delve further into the topics of this presentation, check our website or send us an email.